You're watching Telecom TV from SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague. And joining me now, I have a panel of three guests. Uh, on my far right, Beth Cohen, who is SDN Product Strategist at Verizon. Next to Beth is Inma Rodriguez, who is Head of Core, Cloud and OSS for Europe and Latin America with Ericsson. And next to Inma is Daniel Lawson, who is Managing Director of Advanced Technology at Verizon. Thanks for all of you for joining us on Telecom TV. Oh, we're talking about the, the transformation towards digital service providers, um, and we're looking at NFV. Beth, why is orchestration so important to the development of NFVs? So NFVs, at the end of the day, are, are network services, and, and to realize the benefit of them, you really need to automate and orchestrate. So orchestration, of course, is part of automation. So that's that's why it's incredibly important because you know we're as a, as an operator we want to drive costs out of uh, out of these services so that we can be more efficient with our networks our network services and how we deliver to our customers so you're seeing as well Emma? yeah actually um, just to complement what you said there is an increased complexity because mm. we are going to handle so many different services so with using different technologies like the traditional network functions, the virtualized, the containerized. So, and we are going to distribute also that workload in many geographies. So you mm. definitely need orchestration in order to handle those end to end and simplify your operations. Right. Mm. And, and, and also centralizing the controllers as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. Right. And that's a complexity, frankly, that our customers don't want to deal with. And so our ability to simply yes. deliver services you know, is enabled by orchestration. Right. Inma, can I ask about Ericsson's role and how you see Ericsson's role in supporting the rollout of, of new networking technologies? Because Ericsson's been around forever, um, very experienced in the, in the business. So how are you supporting technologies such as SDN, NFE, and, and 5G? We, we, have, uh, we are partners of, uh, of uh, some of the operators, some of the leading operators among them, Verizon, that we are very happy to work with. And uh, we have been working with them in the evolution of the mobile technologies into the different generations, right? So we have worked, for example, with Verizon introducing uh, in Volte uh, in a virtualized environment. We are working now uh, showing them how the first containerized network function uh, a virtual a containerized MME can work, real, for real, uh, already now, even in 4G. Um, so the, our purpose is to, to choose, select the specific service providers what that we can work with. We can analyze the, desk, the, the use cases that they need to implement and work very tightly together in the development of those uh, technologies. So, so just to, to build on that, um, there's, there's two areas that we're working with you. Um, you know, on our side is the product side, of course, which is um, the orchestrate our universal CP and our service chains, which is extremely important. But you also mentioned containerized, um, and you know, right now our service chains, you know, to our customers are not containerized, but that's the future, that's obviously. The future, exactly. So, so we're we're looking forward to to driving that containerization with our mm. with our partners and try a look and feel. You know, people start to learn how to use them and how right. to orchestrate them right. as well. As you and, said, and yeah. the added complexity of managing them. Of yeah. Course. And and Inma mentioned, you know, in the in the radio access network and particularly the rollout of 5G. We're currently working with uh, with Ericsson on on how we use 5G as a delivery mechanism for SD WAN. So you really see it across the entire spectrum within the Verizon portfolio. So th this um, working practice of of working uh, and closely with with selected partners is is it just it just makes sense. Well, it's it's table stakes, right? There's um, there are things that you can be experts in and things where you need partners to be experts. Uh, you know, the Verizon Ericsson relationship is clearly a, a great example of that. Right. Uh, we we don't like to admit it. We are integrators, um, but we are definitely not software developers, <laughs> and we're definitely not builders of hardware. So we look to partners to do that, and, and Ericsson is a is a is a great partner for for adding. Mm. You know, it's complementary, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we we use them as a reference customer to implement this in other customers, which are not yet in that, the same state of the journey. So so win win. Yep. So Beth, what lessons uh, are we able to share so far from, from the experience of developing these new technologies? I'd say the biggest, biggest one is, uh, you know, if you think you've solved the problem, you've probably only gotten about 10% in. Uh, and, and, you know, the real gotchas, the real hurdles are operational, and, and it's almost impossible to find out what they're going to be until you, 
bump into the rocks, um, which we have. <laughs> um, but the, the good news is that, you know, our um, you know, Verizon's committed to the new technologies. We know that this is the future. We know we need to get there. And, and we have, due to our early commitment, have really in, essentially invented a lot of this stuff working with our partners and, um, and have overcome many of the obstacles. And, and we have a working, you know, working products that we are selling to customers and we have happy customers, so. Yeah, and I would say those, the things that we've learned, you know, through closed feedback loops, can turn that into a competitive advantage. And I think that speaks to the fact that it's every bit as much of a cultural change as it is, you know, a technology change. So investing as much in changing the hearts and minds as it is changing the technology. And Ima, what lessons can, uh, can you share with us from, from this relationship? Oof, uh, many, but maybe a little bit going into what you mentioned earlier, it, it is changing how we're going to operate the network and how we're going to deliver software. So more continuous uh, integration, continuous de de delivery, this implies a new relationship between the operator and the, and the, and the solution provider that uh, we need to continue and work in that model in order to reintroduce the services much faster. So it's, it's one area we need to continue working with. Well, yeah. Particularly since it drives into the service assurance and service delivery components, mm -hmm. which traditionally are and really hasn't been involved in much, but mm. because you're, you're but now we're <laughs> now you are. <laughs> Inma, can I ask you? Can you explain more about the containerized MME solution? Yes, uh, MME is one of the nodes that uh, is part of the of the packet core network. It's actually the controller, and the Ericsson is already uh, putting that in containers uh, in 4G. So you can today. Uh, try real traffic into a containerized uh, network application. Well, Beth, Inmar, and Daniel, thank you all very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thanks for having thank us. You. Yes, pleasure. Always a pleasure.